Welcome to 30 Second Chances, where we ask deep contemplative questions and provide far too little time to formulate thoughtful, reflective answers. My guest today is Graham Harrison, VP and General Manager of Blue Sound Professional. How's that? Did I do that right? Perfect. Ah, excellent, excellent. How are you, Graham? I'm good, thanks. Good, good. All right, you know the drill, 30 seconds on the clock and then on to the next question. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be, I think. Excellent. Question number one, describe your job to a five-year-old. I head a company that makes stuff that reproduces music when you go into a shop or a restaurant and you hear the music in the background. We make that stuff. And in addition, I also work to try to make sure that musicians get paid properly for recording music that gets played in those places. Musicians get paid? Well, a little bit. <laughs> Not as much as they should. Next question. The Graham Harrison action figure has just been released. What two must-have accessories are bundled with it? <laughs> oh, let me think. Um, a portable high-resolution audio player and a designer briefcase. <laughs> Of course, because what else do you have to keep the player in and carry it along with you, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a very odd probably, combination. Probably a things. third one, a really good set of headphones. <laughs> true enough, true enough. Next question. Steve Irwin has you in a headlock. What is he telling the audience about you and your native habitat? Oh, my native habitat is is England, <laughs> natively. I've, I've been... been transposed to Portland, Oregon. Um, but all of those habitats are places where we have a lot of rain. And um, I kind of have developed, I'm developing webbed feet as time goes on to cope with my, uh, my both my home and my adopted very wet native habitats. So even though I love the sun, I just don't seem to be able to get to places where it comes out very much. Next question. What's the strangest thing you've ever done for money? Morris danced. I used to be a Morris dancer in England, which is a folk um, type of folk dancing. And um, on a few occasions, I did that uh, for TV programs in England. So I got paid for, um, for strutting my funky stuff in a very folky manner. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it sounds vaguely... <laughs> Disturbing. It's legal. It's legal. You can do okay, it. good, good. All right. Next question. What's the most creative backhanded compliment you've ever received? <laughs> well, uh, what first comes to, to mind is, um, is something I heard when, uh, when someone was asked to, to uh, have, have a better repartee with women. And uh, so we went dancing with a woman and uh, he thought, God, I've got to say something good about her. And so he said, he's a Northern English person. He said, e, you don't sweat much for a fat lass. So maybe, maybe you don't sweat much for a fat guy. <laughs> All right, next question. If you could have one pointless or semi-useless superpower, what would it be? Uh, well, again, the first thing that comes to mind is the ability to drink unlimited alcohol and not get drunk would be a really good one. But I'm going to actually choose the ability to, to understand and speak any language because I'm not very good at languages and I do a lot of traveling and I'd, I'd love to be able to just better immerse myself in that environment and be able to interact with people from other countries without having to make them speak English. So you'd be sort of Rosetta man, as it were. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, next question. You've just had a huge blowout with your significant other. What's the first album you put on and why? Ooh, probably Peter Gabriel. Um, and I'd probably put the track In Your Eyes on. Uh, it, that's what I walked on uh, at our wedding to. And it has a lot of historical kind of resonance for my wife and I and how we came together. Um, so yeah, probably, probably Peter Gabriel. Interesting choice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, next question. Tell me something about yourself that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but is actually true. Hmm, I've already, I've already unleashed the Morris dancing thing. Um, so, so that's off my list. Um, I can play, I play mainly um, drums, but I can play other associated, well, not associated, but other esoteric instruments. So things like harpsichord and um, hammered dulcimer, sort of, kind of, I don't go for the mainstream stuff, the, you know, the guitar and, and <clears throat> piano stuff. I just go for the esoteric ones. But no accordion or anything like that, right? No, I've got I've got more manners than that. No accordion, no bagpipes. Yes, we know we know the we know the old uh, was it the Winston Churchill saying about that one? Yes, yes. <laughs> someone who knows how to play accordion but doesn't. Yes. Indeed, yes. All right, next question: What would fifteen-year-old you be most and least impressed with about present-day you? Well, probably the least impressed is my gut. <laughs> It'd probably say, "Get a grip on yourself." <laughs> um, but most impressed is is the probably the winding manner of my career. I, I was a research chemist. I then became a musician. I then got in the industry. I then moved to America. I worked for big oil companies, then for music companies. Now I'm doing a startup of my own. So kind of not really conforming to a conventional career progression. I know this. I know this well. Yes. Um, People have asked me about the the odd careers I've had, and you know, I, I think I'm the only one I I know who has ever been a professional kite maker, for example. Oh wow, no, I haven't done that. <laughs> it's kind of an odd one. All right, that concludes our round of questions. I'm going to put 30 seconds more on the clock and allow you to either pontificate on something meaningless, or shamelessly plug something, or ask me a question, or do whatever you like with it. It's 30 seconds, and it's yours. Go. Okay, I, I will shamelessly plug my own podcast, which is called Surroundscapes, and is all about the future of business. So uh, the idea is it's supposed to be thought-provoking content to help the AV industry be relevant, particularly com coming out of the pandemic we're in now. So we've done series on the future of hospitality and retail, the future of the workplace. I'm recording one at the moment on the future of events. And we'll be doing one on the future of music, both in the creation elements of it and also the monetization elements of it. So have a listen to Surroundscapes. It's available on all your normal podcast platforms. And tell me what you like about it and what you don't like about it. That's excellent. And, and true to form, like everybody else on this particular show, you have gone over 30 seconds. So. <laughs> I'm a sales guy. I don't well done. <laughs> Well done. Well done. Well, Graham Harrison, thank you so much for being our guest. You're very welcome. That was a lot of fun. Thanks very much. <laughs> the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Mm -hmm.